Section 2b is about permutations, which we will get to eventually, but because permutations involve factorials and being able to simplify them is a very important part of how to figure out how many permutations there are going to be in any given situation, I think it makes sense to just kind of run through the factorials first. Um, so just in case anyone hasn't seen them before or hasn't seen them in a long time, I figured this was worth it. So n factorial, like it says there, written as n with an exclamation point, so excla exclamation point means factorial. Um, it's the product of the consecutive positive integers from 1 to n, even though usually you write them in decreasing order instead of increasing order. So like if you look over here, um, 1 factorial, that's just 1, but then 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so that's 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 6, and so forth. Um, I just wanted to throw a bigger one in there, so like 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which winds up being 5,040. And I didn't put this in here because we don't need it in this section, but we're going to in the next one. So when we need it, 0 factorial is actually defined as being 1, not 0. Um, like I said, in this section you don't need it, but it does kind of go along with the factorial stuff, so I wanted to mention it. Um, all right, so then simplifying some e expressions that involve factorials. Number one is just a straight up factorial, right? It's five factorial, what do you get? Well, if we expand it out, we could write this as five times four times three times two times one, which works out to be 120 because five times four is 20, three times two is six, right? So this is 20 times six which is 120. And then like if you wanted to kind of build off of that, then you'd say, well then six factorial must be 720 because then it would just be 120 times six. And that's true. Um, all right, but then what if you have a quotient of factorials? This actually happens a lot, both in this section and in the next one. Um, the part that's worth noticing is how much you can cancel out, which is a whole lot. So I'll write out the 8 factorial and the 6 factorial all the way, and you'll see what I mean by how much we can cancel. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then 6 factorial is going to be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. A lot of stuff that we can cancel because basically there's a six factorial within the eight factorial, right? You could think of it as being eight times seven times six factorial. So you can actually cancel a lot of stuff, right? Because you could go, we can cancel those sixes and we can cancel those fives and we can cancel those fours and we can cancel those threes and we can cancel those twos, right? That's quite a bit of stuff. And really then we're just gonna have a one on the bottom because everything's been canceled. So you could say, well, then this is just eight times seven over one, but then that's 56. So the key thing is the cancellation, right? Because when you get down here, you go, okay, yeah, eight times seven, that's, that's easy, right? Um, that's only easy because all the cancellation happened, right? You would still get 56 if you didn't do the cancellation, but you'd have to deal with a lot of huge numbers. So when you're simplifying quotients that involve factorials, I would say just cancel all kinds of stuff whatever you can. Um, and number three, this is the same type of scenario. So I'll, we'll do the same thing because the kind of thing that's going on in number three, that's gonna be big in the section after this. Um, this exact type of expression where you got one factorial on the top and then two on the bottom where these two numbers add up to this number, right? Like how five plus four is nine. Um, but if I expand these out, so 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then on the bottom, I'm going to have a 5 factorial and then a 4 factorial. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 for the 5 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 for the 4 factorial. Okay. With something like this, I think there is a general strategy. So notice how in two, when we just had the one factorial on the bottom, we could just cancel the whole thing, right? Here, 
what you'll end up being able to do is you can cancel one of the factorials entirely and then you can you'd have to work at it to get rid of the other one um, what I would say is get rid of the big factorial first so even though like you can see where I have the four three two and one kind of lined up in the numerator and denominator I'm actually not going to cancel those first I'm going to get rid of the five factorial and cancel that because it's bigger right it's bigger than four factorial so you can cancel all of that with all of this right um, and then other than that I would say just cancel whatever else you can cancel so I'm looking at these numbers up here and then these down here and I'm thinking four times two is eight so you cancel the four and the two with that eight right and then the three I guess you could say well six is a multiple of three and so is nine whichever one you want to pick I'm gonna pick the six so three goes into six twice so what I'm ending up with is nine times seven times two over one so it's 63 times 2, which is 126. And this is another one where the key is the cancellation, right? You cancel out as much as you can um, because otherwise you'll get the same answer, but you have to deal with a lot of big numbers to get there. And it's better to have small numbers and big numbers, I always say, right? Um, the, the mathematics gets much easier when the numbers are not quite as big. All right, now we can get to the permutations. So what a permutation is, um, generally, it's an ordering of some group of objects. So it's like there has to be some idea of like what position is first and second and third and fourth. Um, and so as opposed to set theory, where in set theory it was like, eh, if you're going to write out your set using the roster method, then as long as you get the right elements in there, it doesn't really matter what order they go in. For a permutation, it matters what's first, what's second, what's third, um, right? Like if it was a race, let's say, like like it's a swim meet, right? Then, you know, that's how you're going to arrange the results, right? This is who is first, this is who is second, this is who is third, right? That kind of thing. So um, position would translate to something like that. Um, and I put essentially just because you could argue like, well, if you're going left to right, you could be like, we have left, then second left, third left, fourth left, and eventually all the way over on the right. Um, but you could also say, um, or you could kind of rework that mentally and say like, well, then that first position on the left is first, the one next to it is second, the one next to it is third, and so forth. So mentally, I always kind of just turn it into first, second, third, just to kind of keep it simple. Um, but... Um, with the idea with permutations is that order matters. That's the biggest thing here is that the order makes a difference. So with this example, the three digit numbers seven or that you can make out of the digits seven, two, and nine, um, if you don't repeat digits, um, then right like with different three digit numbers, the order of the digits matter, right? Like 729 and 792 are different numbers, right? Because you go, well, then this one's got a two in the tens place and a nine in the ones place. 792's got a nine in the tens place and a two in the ones place. Like those are different numbers. Order matters, right? The order that you write the digits in makes a difference. Um, and then these are the six options that you get if there are no repeats allowed. So how do you determine the number of possible permutations in general? Um, you figure out how many options there are in the first position, then how many there are for the second and the third and so forth and then you just multiply all those numbers together. So this one with the seven, two, and the nine, I think you could kind of exhaust it pretty quickly because then you say, well, if the number started with a seven, it could either go two, nine, or nine, two. After that, if it started with a two, you get two options. If it started with a nine, you get two options. And that's clearly everything, right? Um, but it's not always gonna be things that are quite that short. So it would be better to have an actual process to use. And so I can show you how to do it. Like for the three digit numbers, so a three digit number. Um, so I'm just gonna draw this like with three blanks. So like one digit would go here, one would go there, one would go there. So then if this is the first position right here, then right there in that one, you would have three choices because you could have the seven or the two or the nine. But 
then if there aren't any repeats allowed, um, then in the second position, you'd only have two choices, right? Because let's say hypothetically the two goes here in the first slot then you couldn't reuse the two in the second slot because you can't have repeats. So it would have to be either seven or nine. That's two options, right? So then here you'd have two choices. And then once two of them have been used up, you're only gonna have one left, right? Like if the two was here and then the nine was here in the second um, position, then in the third one, you gotta use the seven, right? There's nothing else left. So when you get down here, you only have one choice. And so then when you multiply the numbers together, three choices times two choices times one choice is six. And that's what we're supposed to get, right? I mean, that's what's up here. We have six options written out explicitly. But yeah, that's what we're supposed to get. Um, all right, well then what if you can repeat digits? All right, well then, if you can repeat digits, I guess we can have our diagram of a three digit number again. So I'll just make another one here. All right, so now we can have repeats. So it's still gonna be you got three choices for the first digit. But then in the second one, if you can have repeats, you have three choices again. Right, because let's say you use up the two here. Well, then here you could have the seven or the nine or the two because this time repeating is acceptable. So then here you'd get three choices. And then here you'd also get three choices. So you'd have three times three times three, which is three cubed or 27. Right, so this is the main difference, right? That the digits can be repeated. Um, most of the time you end up in situations where you can't repeat individuals. Like if you're trying to arrange people for a picture, you can't have multiple copies of the first person showing up elsewhere, right? Um, it's gonna be all different people in the different spots. So usually you get ones like this where you can't have the repeats, but occasionally it shows up. Usually it'll have something to do with numbers um, if you can have repeats. Um, and there are questions like this in the homework, so I did want to make sure I threw that in. All right, um, next, um, usually I think horse races are eight horses, I think, um, but the Kentucky Derby has 20. I remember that. Um, yeah, I lived in Kentucky for 17 years, yet I know almost nothing about horse racing. Um, but. If there are 20 horses and we want to know how many um, different possibilities are there um, for one horse to finish in first, uh, another to finish second, and then another to finish third, right? Here you clearly couldn't have repeats because how could a horse possibly finish like first and second at the same time, right? That doesn't make any sense. So how can we have, have uh, or how many different options can we have here? So for finishing first, there are 20 possibilities. right? Because any horse could do it. But then for second, we're not going to have 20, we're going to have 19, right? Because whatever horse finishes first cannot also finish second. So we got to rule that one out. So 19 possibilities for second. And then for third, it's going to be 18 because you got to rule out the horse that finished first and rule out the horse that finished second, right? Neither of them could also finish third. So that means we have 18 left. So there are 18 possibilities here. And then, so the, the total number of ways that you could have a horse finishing first, another one second, another one third, would be 20 times 19 times 18, which works out to be 6840. Oh, and why did I write everything on the left and leave this right side blank? Because I'm actually going to use it in a second, but it involves the formula that's on the next page. So this formula right here, I never use it, to be perfectly honest. I prefer to just kind of reason through it and say, okay, 20 go here, then nine, 
you you couldn't have whoever finished first in this position, so you have 19 options left here, then you have 18 here. Um, like I like to go step by step like that. That's easier for me to follow along with. But there is a formula for this. So if you're given n distinct objects, um, so the distinct is important. If um, there are objects that aren't distinguishable from each other, what you have to do is a little bit different, and we're actually going to kind of work our way up to it. Um, that's about a page away from here. So we'll get there pretty shortly. But n distinct objects, so like 20 different horses, right? Or three different digits, right? Those are distinct objects too. The number of ways to select r objects out of those n, um, but in order, is this. So the p is supposed to stand for permutation there. And then it's n factorial over n minus r factorial. And that would work here, because here, um, if we're going to use the formula, and this will actually be longer, I think, but with the formula, what you would have is, so n is the total number of distinct objects, which I guess here would be horses. So n is 20, and then r is how many we're selecting, and that's 3, because we're looking at how many finish either first, second, or the number of different ways to finish first, second, or third. So that's just three horses if they're gonna finish in the top three. So then R is three. And so then if we're gonna use the formula, we'd be figuring out P of 23. And if I sub in based on what's down here, it looks like it'll be 20 factorial over 20 minus three factorial. But 20 minus three is 17. Right, so we're saying, all right, well, this is 20 factorial over 17 factorial. And this looks like it's going to be long to write out, right? Because these factorials, I mean, they're kind of big, like 20 factorial, or 20 times 19 times 18, 17, 16, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. That's true, but watch this. This is how you deal with the big factorials if you know you're going to cancel them out anyway. Because you know that's what we're gonna be thinking about. Like when we had the eight factorial over six factorial and we could cancel the whole six factorial out. That's what I'd be thinking about here. Like, can we get rid of that whole 17 factorial? Yes, we can. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I'm gonna start writing out that 20 factorial. So 20 times 19 times 18 times, and then the rest of it would be 17, 16, 15, 14 down to, 3 times 2 times 1, but that's 17 factorial. And then we still got a 17 factorial down there. And so notice what I did with the top. I basically just broke off the first few numbers and then said what we're left with is a 17 factorial. And I just kind of angled it, like I broke off the right number of values on the front end so that then I could cancel stuff. Right, like that's what I'm trying to do here is just cancel as much as I can. And then we can go, oh, well, there's a 17 factorial. There's a 17 factorial. This is 20 times 19 times 18, which is the exact same thing that we got over here. So it's gonna be 6840 again. So sure, you could use the formula if you wanted to. And for some people, um, maybe that's gonna work better. Like that would make sense that for some people it works one way, for some people it works the other. For me, it's kind of easier to go through it position by position and go, okay, I got this many, then I got this, then I got this. Um, but I'm sure for some people a formula is easier. So that's why it's there, right? Um, all right, number five with the donuts. So I got some donuts in there. Um, so I guess this one's really set up for not using the formula because you can write it underneath the donuts, which is kind of the idea. Um, but if a baker makes 14 types of donuts, they want to put five of them in a display case, but they want them all to be different kinds, right? Like they don't want to just have like five like basic glazed donuts, right? They want maybe one of those, but then like four other varieties that they got too. So how many different ways can they do it? So I guess this is one where we're going left to right, let's say, where I'm thinking of this as like first donut, second donut, third, fourth, fifth, right? So that's kind of how I would do it. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but I think that might be the easiest thing to do. But if this is the first donut, right? So I'm just kind of thinking of this as like, like first, second, third, 
fourth, fifth. And then I'm saying, all right, so for the first donut, I have 14 options because they make 14 kinds, right? Then whatever I use the first time, I can't use here, but I could use any of the other ones. So then I've got 13. Then when I get here, I can't use either of these first two, but I could use any of the other 12. And then same idea here. I've already used three, but I still got 11 options. And then when I get to the fifth one, I've already used four, but I've still got 10 options. So then um, how many different ways can they do it? It's 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10, which ends up being 240,240. Which feels like a weird looking number with how repetitive it is, but that's what it ends up being. So kind of a lot, right? A lot of different options there. Um, if you wanted to do it the other way, you could, right? So if you wanted to use the formula, I think I can squeeze this in here. It would be P of 14, five, right? Because we got 14 different options for the donuts. And we're gonna use five of them. So this would be 14 factorial over 14 minus five factorial, but 14 minus five is nine. So this is 14 factorial over nine factorial. And if you wanna simplify it, you can use the same maneuver that I used uh, when we did number four the second time. I'm gonna to try to cancel out this nine factorial. So I'm gonna rewrite the 14 factorial with the first few numbers kind of broken off, and then we're left with that nine factorial at the end that we can cancel out. So I'm, I'm just gonna start writing out the multiplication and stop when I get to nine, basically, and then just say it's nine factorial the rest of the way down. So 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 times nine factorial, right? So there it is. We're saying nine factorial the rest of the way down if you wrote it fully expanded. And then still got the nine factorial on the bottom. We can cancel those nine factorials and you can see it, right? 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 um, divided by one, right? So you get 240,000, 240, all right. So yeah, either way works. Um, number six, because I wanted to squeeze an extra one of these in here, this is another one where repeats are allowed um, and are they ever. Um, I forget now, I should have looked this up again today, the number of um, pin numbers that have a repeating digit, because um, here they're usually four digits long, but still the number with a repeating digit in there is extraordinarily high. Um, that's really high. And the, the, um, like the percentage of pin numbers that have a zero in them is also extraordinarily high. Um, so I guess if you wanna have a weird pin number, um, have one with no zero and no repeating digit. Um, that, that would, I think, put you in the minority, um, pretty clearly in the minority. Um, but the inventor of the ATM originally envisioned a six digit pin number rather than a four digit pin number. Um, but then four ended up being the convention just because that's an easier thing to remember, right? Um, and there is still a decent number of possibilities, although certainly if it's six digits, there are more. Um, but then we want to know how many possible four digit pins are there? How many possible six digit pins are there? But repeats are allowed, right? Certainly you can have repeats in your pin number. Lots of people do. So we have possible four digit pins. Well, then what you would have, I guess I can have like the, the four digits. Um, so like here, you're gonna have 10 choices for the first, because it can be any digit, right? Zero through nine, that's 10 different options, right? But then it's gonna be the same thing here. And then the same thing here. And then the same thing here. So we're gonna end up with 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is equal to 10 to the fourth power, which would be a one followed by four zeros, which is 10,000. Okay, well then how about the possible six digit pins? 
you can probably see it already, right? If four digit pins was 10 to the fourth, six digit pins is gonna be 10 to the sixth. Yeah, that's also why I don't need a lot of room to write this one out. But if, if, you're, if you're thinking about that, you're, you're definitely thinking the right way. Um, but for possible six digit pins, you would have 10 to the sixth power, right? Because now you would have six digits that you'd have to fill in, but there are 10 options each time. So it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Um, so that's going to be a one followed by six zeros if you write it out without scientific notation or without an exponent. And you end up with one million, right? So maybe the inventor of the ATM was thinking like, you know, one million is a nice round number for the number of possibilities. But we ended up going with four. I think there are um, places in the world that have six, but I think the four is more common. Um, all right. Now we get into the wrinkle. What if some objects can't be distinguished from each other? So um, number six was just to throw in another one where repeats were okay, but this is sort of in comparison to four and five. So if I go back to like number five, um, like all the types of donuts are different. You could distinguish them from each other, right? Um, like a jelly donut doesn't look like just a a regular glazed donut, right? You go, yeah, those are different donuts, right? You can distinguish them from each other. Um, or here, like with 20 horses, those are 20 different horses, right? And even if like you have a couple of horses that look pretty similar, right? They're probably going to have, um, you know, like a different face mask or, you know, like a different number um, or something like that, right? Um, the jockey's going to be wearing a different outfit, right? So something, something to that effect. Um, but what if you have objects that you can't distinguish? So you have like a bunch of copies of the same thing, basically. Um, so let's say if there are n elements in a set where you have r, where r1 is some number. So like, like three alike and four. Um, so, so three that are, that look like each other and then four that look like each other but are different from this group, right? That kind of thing. So with R1 alike and R2 alike, that's what that's supposed to be getting at. So then the number of permutations would be this. It's N factorial over R1 factorial times R2 factorial. But then what if you have N elements where you have R1 alike, R2 alike, and R3 alike, where it's like, you know, here's a group that's all similar to each other. Let's say there are three of them. And then there's some other group that all look alike and there are four of them. And then there's a third group that all look alike and there are like seven of them, right? Then um, you'd have, I guess, a three factorial, four factorial, and a seven factorial down here. Um, and then this is the general version. Um, so whatever K would be, like however many different groups you have of um, objects that look alike, I guess, um, then this is how it would work out. But I think this is a little easier to see with concrete examples rather than just with the formulas. So like here with number seven, um, if you have seven yellow tennis balls and three orange tennis balls, um, how many different ways could you arrange them in a row? And then we're assuming like for the yellow tennis balls, you can't tell them apart, right? Like none of them have like specific markings on them or anything like that. There's seven yellow tennis balls that look like each other. So they're all the same brand, like they're all Wilson or something, right? Um, so what do we have? Well, combined, we have 10 tennis balls, first of all, right? Because we got seven yellow and three orange. So that's going to be an important number. So 10 total, which would mean that n is 10, right? That's our total number of objects. Or if you want to think of it like a set, the total number of elements. Um, but then if there are seven yellow, then, so that would be like the R1 being alike. So R1 is seven. We have seven that are alike. And then R2, the orange would be three, right? So three orange, that would mean that R2 is three. And I hope this helps to make this a little less abstract, like this R1 alike and R2 alike business. Um, Cause then we're saying, okay, we have seven yellow. So that's seven that are alike. So like that's our R1 number. And then three are orange, so then three, there's a, a separate group, but those three are all alike, so R2 is gonna be three. So then the number of distinct rows that you could make, so I guess the number of 
distinct rows, it would be 10 factorial, right? Because you have the n factorial first. Um, and actually, I'm going to write that write it out that way initially. Um, so it would be, in this case, n factorial over r1 factorial times r2 factorial. So now if I put the numbers in, that'll be 10 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 factorial. And what we're going to be able to do is we'll be able to cancel a lot of stuff down here. Actually, we'll be able to cancel everything. My strategy is get rid of the big factorial first. So watch the way that I write this out. I'm not going to write the 10 factorial out all the way because I'm going to try to cancel out that 7 because that's bigger than 3, right? So I'm going to say, well, then 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial, right? And then down here, I've got a 7 factorial that I can cancel out, and then I have 3 times 2 times 1. I guess I might as well expand the 3 factorial. But then you could cancel these 7 factorials, and then other than that, it's just do what you can, right? So 9 is a multiple of 3, so it goes in, so 3 goes into 9 3 times, right? And then 2, I guess you could cancel it with 10 or cancel it with 8. I guess I'll cancel it with the 8 and say 2 goes into 8 4 times. So this is going to be 10 times 3 times 4. Right? That's all that we're left with. And that's 120, since that's 10 times 12. And that is going to be our answer. Okay. And then how about this one? Uh, we got 7 yellow three orange, and now two red tennis balls. So now we've got 12 total, because we've got seven plus three plus two. All right, so 12 total, which would mean that n is 12. Then we've still got seven yellow. So r1 is still gonna be seven. And we've still got three orange. So r2 is still gonna be three. But now we're going to have an R3 because we got two red. So then that means that R3 is going to be two. And we're going to do the same thing where we're going to put them in a row. So this time, the number of distinct rows. So it's going to be n factorial on top. So that's 12 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And let's see, I'm going to get rid of the 7 factorial again. So that means I'm going to write the 12 factorial, like I'm going to start expanding it out, but I'm going to write it where there's a 7 factorial in it, because I know I'm, I'm just going to cancel that anyway. So I'll have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial and then over 7 factorial, and then I guess the 3 factorial and the 2 factorial I'll expand out. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. And I should point out that you can always expand the factorials all the way out if you want to. It's just a lot longer. But if that feels easier, then there's nothing wrong with doing it. But that's why I always stop short here, because I know what I'm going to cancel. I'm going to get rid of that 7 factorial, so I'm going to cancel them. Other than that, let's see. With what's left down here, 3 times 2 times 2 is actually 12, right? So I could cancel all this with that 12. And then what we're going to be left with is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, which is, let's see, that's what, 110 times 72. So that's 720 plus 70. Um, let's see, am I thinking about that right? Um, yeah, so it's seven. Okay, seventy nine twenty. Yeah, that's it. All right, so a lot. Um, and if you look at this and you go, well, that number was a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, well, yeah. Um, you wouldn't think it would jump that much just by adding in two more tennis balls. Right, because with 10 of them, we only had this many. But then we had this many when we had 12. 
Um, a lot of that is just having an extra category, right? Because first we just had the two where we had yellow and orange. Now we've got yellow and orange and red. Um, but that can happen. Um, so we end up with a number that's much, much bigger. Uh, so that will happen in the homework sometimes too, where you'll get numbers that look huge. Um, sometimes with permutations that just happens where you just end up with a lot of different possible orderings. And if you have a lot of different groups, the number just, it, it just explodes. It gets huge. So that's kind of what happens here, right? We just had one extra group and the, and the number got way bigger. That's kind of the way it works. All right, um, Whaley C number 11. We're gonna love that. Um, all right, number nine. How many distinct arrangements are there of the letters in mammals? And you can see these like this one and then number 10 and then number 11 when we get there. Um, they're arranging letters. That's what most of the problems um, that have indistinguishable elements um, that's what most of them look like in the homework. So I'm trying to emulate that. But with mammals, I guess the first thing is how long is that word? It's seven letters, right? So with seven letters, that tells us that N is seven. But then what repeats? Well, M repeats. We got three of them. So we got three M's. And so that would mean that R1 is three. And then we've got two A's, A repeats, right? So two A's, which would mean that R2 is two. And that's basically it because then L and S just show up once. So then the number of distinct arrangements it's going to be seven factorial for, for the n factorial on top, and then over three factorial times two factorial. All right. So then I guess I'm going to, I'm going to try to get rid of this three factorial this time. So I'm going to write out the seven factorial on the top where I'm going to stop at three. So seven times six times five times four times three factorial. And then I'll have the three factorial and then I guess I might as well expand the two factorials, two times one, but we can cancel those three factorials. And then two goes into six, also goes into four. I guess I'll use the four and just say two goes into four twice. So this ends up being seven times six times five times two. So let's see, that's 42 times 10. So that's 420 and that's the answer. Another thing that I suppose is worth mentioning here is like, you know, how come we don't do anything with these individual letters? Um, you could, um, like if you wanted to have like a one factorial down here for the L and then another one factorial for the S, you can have that. They won't affect anything since one factorial is one, right? So you can put those in, but then you're just multiplying by one. So the convention is if you have like letters here um, that don't repeat, right, that are, that are completely distinct from everything else, right, there's only one L in this, there's only one S, you just kind of leave those alone, don't worry about it. Because if you put those in, it would just mean you're multiplying by one, which wouldn't change the value of the expression, but you would have more stuff that you're writing out. So usually you just leave those out and just worry about the ones that actually repeat. Speaking of which, that means in number 10, we're going to leave out a whole bunch, because with Greenlee, there's only one letter that repeats, although it repeats a whole lot. Um, but green Lee has got eight letters, right? Because green is five and Lee is three. So that's gonna be eight letters. So N is equal to eight. And then the only thing that repeats is E, right? Because G, R, N, and L, the consonants, only show up once each. But there are four E's. So that means that R1 is four. So then the number of distinct arrangements is going to be 8 factorial over 4 factorial, right? We only have one thing that repeats, so we only have one factorial down here. It's not going to be repeated by some other factor or multiplied by some other factorial. 
Um, so I guess I'm going to write this so I can cancel a 4 factorial out. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. And then I can cancel the 4 factorials. So then this is just 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. So that's 56 times 30, which is going to be... I'm going to cheat and look this time. 1680, okay. So 1680 is what we get there. Um, and then where I said you're going to love number 11. How many distinct arrangements are there in yellow wood door? Okay, first of all, the reason that I picked this word, at least part of the reason, is for some reason that counts in Scrabble as a single word, which I don't understand, right? Because yellow wood is a thing, but a door made of yellow wood, you would spell that as yellow wood space door, right? Two words, that one word. So I don't get that why, like, officially that counts in Scrabble. That seems like that's two words to me. Um, if you have any extra information about why you would possibly view this as one word, I would love to hear it if anyone happens to know why, because that this has always confused me. But I thought about that and I thought, that's one that's got a lot of repetition. That would be a good one here. So let's see, yellow is a six letter word, woods four, doors four. So there are 14 letters, right? So 14 letters. So that means that N is 14. Then let's see, what repeats? There are a lot of O's. That's the first thing that jumps out to me. There are five, right? One in yellow, two in wood, two in door. So five O's. And I guess you don't have to put these in the order they show up in the word, right? Because I'm clearly not doing it right now. So R1 is going to be five. Let's see, there are two L's, two W's, two D's. Um, all right, so two L's. That would mean that R2 would be 2. Two W's. That would mean that R3 is also 2. And then two D's. That would mean that R4 is also going to be 2. And that's it, right? Because if you add these up, that's 6 plus 5, that's 11. So there are three other letters, but they only show up once. So the Y, the E, and the R are only showing up one time, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, but then the number of distinct arrangements, I think I can squeeze this in here. So the number of distinct arrangements, it's going to be, let's see, 14 factorial on the top, and there's a whole bunch of stuff down here. We're going to have 5 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. All right, and I guess we're going to try to get rid of that 5 factorial, right? That's the biggest one. So 14, 13, 12, 11, times 10, times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5 factorial. And then on the bottom, we're going to have the 5 factorial um, times, I guess I might as well expand these, 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 for those three 2 factorials. So yeah, we're going to cancel out those 5 factorials. Um, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I guess maybe that's the easiest thing I could do here. And just say that's an 8, so it cancels with that 8. And so what we're going to end up with is 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 7, right? Because we canceled that 8 out, and then times 6. All right, if you multiply that out, what you get, and this is one there's no way I could possibly do in my head, 90,810,720. So a huge number of different ways that you could arrange the letters in yellow wood door. Um, and in a way, you, it's almost like you don't really expect it because you look at it and, you're, and it's like, there's so much repetition in there. It doesn't seem like there'd be that many options, but there are. So there are a couple of reasons why. 
One is that we have four different subgroups of repeating letters, right? Because we had repeating O's, repeating L's, repeating W's, repeating D's. And the more of those you get, that actually drives down how big these factorials are and you can't really cancel out as much, right? So that's happening. But also, this is really long, right? It's 14 letters long. So the factorial that goes on the top is really big, right? So you get a really big thing on top just because the word, word, since I think that's actually two words, but since the word is so long, you get a big factorial on top, and then none of these are really all that big, so you can't cancel out that much. And that's kind of a perfect storm where you just end up with a huge number when you simplify that down. Um, so I wanted to get one in there like this where the answer was just absolutely monstrous, um, just to kind of show that it happens, because sometimes when you're doing the homework, I could see where if you were doing it and you got this huge number and you thought, that looks like it's too big, but it happens. Like sometimes there are just a lot of possibilities. Um, I guess it's also possible that it is too big, but if it's just really big, it's very possibly correct because sometimes you just get this sort of thing. Um, but I think that's everything for permutations. The next one will be combinations, which is similar, but there's a big difference. Um, but I guess we'll get there when we get there.